I'm sure many of you have heard of the popular game Wordle that blew up on the internet around January of 2022. Since then, many Wordle-inspired games have been created, such as Nerdle, Dordle, Quordle, Spanish Wordle, Wordle, Global, Chessel, Redactyl, the list goes on. But there is one game in particular that I am no good at, and it infuriates me to no end. It's called Symantle, and it was created by software developer David Turner. You can check out the game at Symantle.com, but the premise is that you're trying to guess a target English word by seeing how close other words are to it semantically. For instance, the target word today is elephant, and some pretty close words are tusk, mammal, and herd. Some not close words are container, police, and remarkable. If you haven't already, I highly recommend playing the game for a few minutes and seeing how far you can get. I myself am absolute trash at the game, but instead of practicing and building up skill like an honest person, I'm going to try to make an AI to solve it for me. Symantle.com includes a very helpful FAQ that explains exactly how the game works. Essentially, every English word is assigned a 300-dimensional vector that encodes a bunch of information about the word. For instance, bumblebee is represented by the vector 0.1055, negative 0.0104, negative 0.2129, and so on. Symantle uses this word vector data to report the similarity between a guess and the target word. Word vector data comes from Google, generated with some AI magic not fit for mortals to understand, and the exact version is conveniently mentioned in the FAQ. So we can go ahead and download it. And there we have it, a 1.6 gigabyte file of word vectors. The first problem we encounter is that there are actually two different ways of measuring the similarity between word vectors, Euclidean distance and cosine distance. Euclidean distance should be the most familiar. We can find the distance between two vectors with the distance formula, which is the same in 300 dimensions as it is in two dimensions. You find the sum of the squares of the differences between corresponding vector entries and take the square root to get the distance. Cosine distance measures the cosine of the angle between two vectors, which might be a little hard to visualize in 300 dimensions. We can get it from the dot product, which is easy to compute. You multiply corresponding vector entries and add them up. It can be proven that the dot product of two vectors equals the product of their magnitudes times the cosine of the angle between them. Using this, we can solve for the cosine of the angle between the vectors. On the one hand, we could just look through Symantle source code and figure out which definition they're using. And there's definitely one intended definition to be used with word to vec But reverse engineering it sounds more fun, and it fills up more time in the video. So the target word today is slot, and we can look at the closest 100 words in this list right here. So we can see here that the closest words to slot are slots, spot, slotted, and position and they have these similarities right here. The list goes on. We can parse this data pretty easily to get the semantical similarity between each of these words and a slot. So let's compute the Euclidean distance between each of these words and a slot based on our word vector data and compare it. So on the left, we see semantical similarity versus our Euclidean distance metric. Let's see how well this correlates. Ah, it doesn't correlate very well. This doesn't look like a great R squared value. Okay, let's see how well cosine distance correlates then. Okay, wow, that looks like a straight line. Let's run a regression on that. It looks like we can get the semantical similarity between two words by multiplying the cosine distance by negative 100 and adding 100. Now this makes sense because words that have very similar meanings tend to point in similar directions, leading to a low angle between them and a cosine value that is pretty close to one, which means the similarity between the two words is close to 100. On the other hand, if the vectors are pointing in very different directions, then the angle between them is very close to 180 degrees, which means the cosine is close to negative one, and the similarity between these two words is close to negative 100. Now let's look at our strategy. It's a pretty dumb brute force method, but it works. I downloaded a list of 479,000 English words off of GitHub and cross-referenced that with the Google word to vec dataset to see which of those 400,000 words had vectors associated with them. The end result was 97,000 English words that could be viable target words. In reality, there's about 4,000 words that Symantle has as possible target words. Thankfully, all of them are contained in these 97,000. We'll use this list of words as all of the valid ones for guesses and answers. Our strategy here is to start with any word, get its similarity, and find all the words on our list that have that reported similarity. This usually narrows down the list to one or two words, because Symantle gives similarities to the hundredths place, and it's hard to have two words that have the same similarity up to that level of precision. This kind of feels like cheating to me, but we're already this far in. So I went ahead and wrote a Python script to implement this brute force algorithm. First, we have to load up our data, which 
Might take a while considering that it is 1.6 gigabytes in total. All right, and now that it's done loading, um, we can submit some guesses to solve today's semantle. So uh, let's get a random word as our starting word, just choosing from the list of English words. Archetypes, okay, has a similarity of 2.21 to the target word today. So let's go through all the words that are 2.21 away from archetypes, scanning all 97,000 possible English words. So this might take a while. Okay, so that took like 10 minutes, but now we know that there are 19 possible words that are a similarity of 2.21 away from archetypes, and one of them is the target word. Some of these include datebook, schmoozed, and dairymen. So let's just try datebook as a possibility, and it has a similarity of 20.39 to the target word. Oh, and something went wrong, apparently. Um, let's do another run. I think I mistyped. Um, I said 2.21 instead of 2.24. Anyways, there are 25 possible words that are 2.24 away from archetypes, and some of them are forthcoming, moo, and seal. Uh, one of these 24 is the target word. Let's try forthcoming. We know that forthcoming is 3.79 away from the target one, and it says that the answer is columnist. We found the target word in four guesses, and I owed say that is a success. Let's try yesterday's semantle. Okay, and like before, let's choose another random word. Okay, tapir. I like this one. It has a similarity of 11.26 to the target word. Okay, now we know that there are 42 possible words remaining. One of them is neglectful. And now we know immediately that the answer is trainer, because that's the only word that has a similarity of 4.85 to neglectful and 11.26 to tapir. And let's go. We got the target word in three guesses. We were able to exploit the underlying data set that Symantle uses, which is the Google word to vec data set, to successfully find the target word in as little as three guesses. Now, of course, this isn't the optimal strategy, and some of you might be saying that an AI that is a brute force algorithm isn't really an AI. But to that I say there are lots of AI that are basically brute force algorithms, like chess. A lot of chess AIs involve a complete search of some kind, even if it's optimized. And this is the first step to creating a semantic bot that is perhaps more efficient. The code is now public on GitHub, so you can go ahead and visit the link in the description to download the code and play around with it a little bit. And when you run the setup file, it will download about 1.6 gigabytes of data. So allow some time for all this data processing to happen. This was a really fun project to make. I certainly learned a lot, and I hope you learned something from this video as well. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.